How can you get your LinkedIn first? Because I go on it all the time and like, post loads of stuff on it. Uh, but my LinkedIn doesn't rise in Ashley. It's 113. And I post like quite regularly, as in like. I always always post like project, like latest projects like there and stuff like that. But it just doesn't rise. It's a really interesting. That's an interesting research, a little bit of a research project for you. It's just like the Joe search actually will be in Tim, and there's several other people that pop up to call me. The only way I could find it is there is like a, uh, seven actually world keys. It is my on that, and it shows all of them at the bottom of the left. But all of his profile. Should we, should we just pause this for a second while everybody's finishing? <laughs> this is a really good point. So. Oh, Explain. Not really. There's more to do. Okay, so you are in this. This is a very, uh, very simple way to to approach LinkedIn profile. The reason I asked you to focus on these three things because this is where the extract in your Google results comes from. Now, search engine optimization. You may have heard that this is some sort of a, uh, a dark art, uh, a, a, a near neighbor of voodoo that um, is, uh, is something you do with keywords and you stick them in the heading of the web pages and you, you can make a website be about anything if you only put in the right keywords. That is complete and utter bollocks at this point. Uh, of course, the search engines got wise to that trick very quickly. That is, you know, sometime in the late 90s. So, um, while it is true that it is good to have good metadata on a website, so if you have your blog or website, you know, do make sure that your website header, uh, that is the actual, you know, look in the actual HTML, make sure that your header has all the right keywords, has a good summary, you've got the right title and all of that. But the actual thing that now matters most for search engine optimization is content. So good content, and this goes for individuals as well as businesses and institutions. Anybody, big or small, we all uh, are subject to the same rule of, uh, of search engines and how they uh, index the, the World Wide Web. They go by content. So the content of the page, so this bit here is the most valuable piece of real estate, both because it's where it's what people will see once they go onto your onto your profile. It is also what Google sees and reproduces on the results page. So remember when I asked you about your keywords, like the keywords that you want to be associated with, they should go here. This is where your keywords go. I got a very good question earlier which can be summarized as basically, what happens if I have a very generic name, right, or a very common name? And that's just, you know, in English, there are certain names that are quite um, standard. Um, I have the great uh, accidental luxury of having a, 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 a name that is even rare in Iceland, where I am from. So, uh, <laughs> I am uh, apparently named after a boat where my, from the village where my, my father grew up. And he was like the name. Um, apparently it was a lucky boat. Um, but um, uh, my brother, however, is named after a trawler. So I'm a boat <laughs> trawler. Um, that's only partly true. He wasn't named after it, but it does share a name. Well, neutral. Um, anyway, so I have a, a, 
an easy SEO task in front of me. I just basically need to make sure that my name is properly spelled and the rest does, does it for itself. I mean, if your name is John Smith, here you are going to have more of a challenge. How does John Smith approach that challenge? Right? What can John Smith do to make himself uh, more visible on social media and more, and more to the point? How does he make himself more visible in search engine results? <laughs> I was gonna say like <laughs> I was gonna say like trying to give himself like an identity, like I don't know, like in a company or something, like kind of yeah, going around getting a few words to you. Both <laughs> both very good suggestions actually. Like use your middle name, save your last name if you have a more uncommon middle name. Yeah. Actually <laughs> a friend of mine did that. He kind of just adopted his middle name as his as his last name to to stick out more, but that would be better. Um, uh, all of these are, are options. I, I, my general sense is that unless you uh, have some artistic reason or a, a kind of uh, a business reason to have a different name than the one that's in your passport, um, I think the default position is basically stick with the one you've got in your passport. Um, and okay, use the same spelling and so on. Because uh, you know, where do you think people go to check up on you if you apply for a job? They, they Google you. So if it turns out you've got you know, three different names floating around, um, that's going to raise some awkward questions. Right? So probably as a as a uh, as a default setting, go with your name, but couch it in the right keywords that you want associated with your name, and it becomes more important the more common your name is. Uh, so uh, both of those suggestions were actually very good. But on the one hand, find out your keywords and make sure that your keywords are consistently applied across the profiles. Because profiles kind of get cross-referenced. So your Twitter profile, uh, the Twitter bio, rather, the Twitter bio is a very, very important piece of real estate. This is where you put all the things you want the world to know about you in 140 characters. Uh, the same, and, and they should have, uh, as you notice maybe, well, not when I put my ass in the way, uh, you may notice <coughs> that there's an overlap in my uh, bio on Twitter and my you know, summary and, and heading on LinkedIn. That's not accidental, that's by design. Uh, and so it is one way of making, you, making yourself more findable in search engine results through your social media profiles. Now the thing about social media profiles is that all of them have a lot of Google juice but LinkedIn apparently has the most Google juice. So it ranks the highest. There's more to say on this topic of Google juice actually, but uh, in terms of just sites that give you a lot of oomph in search engine results, LinkedIn, if you had to go with one of the three we've talked about today, you'd go with LinkedIn actually. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are close, uh, follow close behind. Um, uh, Twitter, I'd say, is, is, uh, is, is, is very good because they, uh, one of the criteria for high rankings in search engines, in search engine results, one of the criteria for the results, uh, but the way they get ranked, is freshness. It's relevance uh, uh, and freshness uh, that, are, that are absolutely crucial to um, to search engine results. Then there's another criterion called authority. I'll get back to that in a little bit. Just to stick to the relevance and freshness uh, elements. So what do you do? Um, there are, these, are, these aren't just the only options. Um, how about, 
like expert profiles. Let's see. So, specialist networks. This is the specialist network that most academics uh, put their profile on, academia.edu. It makes our work a lot more findable. Um, it makes us, it gives us, um, a, it locates us in a specifically academic framework. Uh, this is not something you're going to be using. This is specialist. Now, for you, you may have networks that are specialist and useful for you. Um, can you name some? GitHub. So, more? Bahams. Sorry? Bahams. This is like a designer. Oh, yeah. How is that pronounced? Is it called Behance or Bahams? <laughs> I always pronounce Behance. But that makes me sound like an even more Midwestern than my accent really is. Um, yes, it's a very good one. More? We've got GitHub, Behance. YouTube. Very interesting. As a, as a way of profiling your presence, yes. Um, YouTube, incidentally, is where uh, Apparently, the majority of people go if they need to find out about something. You know, it's, it's basically the second search engine. Stack Overflow. Ah, uh -huh. Stack Overflow, very good. What's good about Stack Overflow? Um, it's, it's supposed to be a tool that you actually can answer. Well, it's basically problem solving. Yeah. But it's not uh, actually It's uh, It's a pretty well known that uh, in, in tech circles, developers don't get hired through uh, normal sort of job adverts or uh, LinkedIn or stuff like that. They are, they're basically on Stack Overflow and GitHub. Uh, this is, that's where uh, developers get located. Partly because both of those, those sites are not only social, they're not just social profiles, they also show engagement. They, they put your engagement in the community on display, and they show your capacity. So if Stack Overflow scores your, you know, if you like, you know, upvotes and posts, or put some answers in, and your answers get liked, or you put in a good answer, it gradually, you get an authority score on, on Stack Overflow. But that apparently is quite valuable once you get into a certain, uh, certain range. Do you know if the same applies to I, I know that UX designer who's, who's basically that said Stack Overflow is, is it, but Behance also has a, has a UX element to it, doesn't it? Um, it's, this is, let's not get into too much detail, but those, do we have any more? UX Stack Exchange. UX Stack Exchange. <laughs> there are specialist versions of Stack Exchange. Um, more? SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Again, for, for uh, profiling your audio presence. Good. So now we're getting to, into more specialist things. Like if you are a sound person, you should probably have a SoundCloud account and, you, and it should be, you should do exactly the same things as, as I mentioned earlier. You know, be consistent across platforms, be consistent profile picture, Keywords, bio, that sort of thing. Make sure that your brand. Deviant art. I don't know. It is still a thing, apparently. Um, it's uh, it, it's definitely an option. I've, I've seen it come up in, in search results. Uh, there is also a uh, there is a there's a, a, a job site called Hive with two eyes that's run by um, Creative Skill Set. So I, I always want to pronounce it Heave. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm immature. Uh, 
Um, hi. The guy. Whoever branded it just. Uh, Hive is very good, but they, do, they are saddled with a dreadful name. Um, it is uh, an initiative of, of Creative Skillset, uh, which is the Sector Skills Council for the Creative Media Industries. So it, it's a specialist kind of graduate and new entrance uh, recruitment tool, and has been apparently very well used by a lot of, um, a lot of employers. So it's worth, uh, it's worth having a, a profile on it. Uh, but, but be advised, it's a temporary thing. Right? It's something you, you'd only use for a year or two after, you know, around graduation, or while you're in that transitional bridging state. It's not a, a long-term profile kind of thing like you would, you would have uh, with the others, the other main bread and butter sites that I've just um, that was, uh, I've just been discussing here. But all of these specialist sites. Um, I don't have any like, golden rules here, but all of these specialist sites, they are, uh, they are valuable in different ways. So given the keywords, given the profile that you've got for your, your, um, uh, your fellow student whose who's, who's, uh, online, um, online presence you are auditing, can you find them on a specialist network like that, so any of the ones that we've just mentioned. Uh, if not, which one would you advise based on the keywords there and their, the, the identity they have indicated that they want to project? Let's just take a few minutes to find that out. 